Hey everyone and welcome back. My name is Josh and this is your fourth stimulus package and news update. In today's video, per usual, we have a lot of news to get into. But first, if you would like to receive two free stocks from Weeble valued up to $2,300, make sure to claim them by clicking my link, which you will find in the description box below. Okay, so with the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer's goal of passing the Build Back Better bill by Christmas, a few different things still stand in the way. The first thing, obviously, are the two moderate Democratic Senators in Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema. It wasn't that long ago that Manchin said that he believed Democrats should take a strategic pause due to all of the recent inflation taking place. Other than that, he's also wanted to reduce the price tag of the bill, which means, of course, removing many of the measures in it. Secondly, we have the whole issue of the debt ceiling and National Defense Authorization Bill, which will need to be addressed first. The debt ceiling will need to be erased around December 15th, at least according to the Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. And with Schumer having hopes of having the bill on the floor the week of December 13th, the debt ceiling debacle may have that deadline pushed back. Obviously, at this time, Republicans are not willing to help Democrats raise the debt ceiling. This is because, politically speaking, Republicans want the Democrats to own this extra debt. On the campaign trail, they want to be able to say it's the Democrats' fault for the increase in our national debt. On the flip side of things, Democrats say that they helped Republicans raise the debt ceiling during the Trump era and that they're also partially responsible for the extra debt. Democrats have also attacked Republicans for their tax cut during the Trump administration, which they say was a tax cut for the rich and also added to the national debt. To that, GOP Senator Chuck Grassley says this is a major inconsistency and the tax cut actually greatly helped the middle class. I'd like to point out the inconsistency of the Democrats. Remember how they attacked Republicans? The tax cut of 2017 was tax cut for the rich, even though the top 1% ended up paying a higher percentage of the total tax coming into the federal treasury than they did before 2017. And then Democrats always want you to believe that they're always worried about the middle class. Well, in this particular time, the, the Build Back Better really stands for Blue State Billionaire Bailout. And I don't know how you can make that any more clear than what these charts already show. But it's uh, giving tax cuts to the millionaires and billionaires, mostly in the coastal and states and the blue states of our country. And, and Democrats are worried about those people. And they want you to believe that they're only worried about the middle class or the lower income classes. So this is something that will bring down their build back better because it was really a blue state billionaire bailout. So Grassley says that the Build Back Better Act gives tax cuts to millionaires and billionaires, whereas Trump's tax cuts actually help the middle class much more. Grassley and other Republicans are basically calling Democrats hypocrites. These tax cuts Grassley speaks of are the salt provisions some Democrats would like to have added to the bill. During the Trump tax cuts, he made it so people could only deduct up to $10,000 of their state and local taxes from their federal tax returns. So if someone who earned $1 million annually in the state of California, they would owe right around $100,000 in state income taxes. Of those taxes, they would only be able to deduct up to $10,000 of it on their federal tax returns. In the Build Back Better bill, some Democrats wish to raise the cap to $80,000. So in the same scenario, the person who earned $1 million per year would be able to deduct $80,000 on their federal returns. Republicans say this is unfair and only benefits the wealthy. This is also another provision holding up the Build Back Better Act, with some Democrats negotiating whether or not this number should be raised, and if so, how much. Here is Florida Senator Rick Scott explaining that Democrats in high tax states want taxpayers to subsidize their taxes. Well, for, first off, let's think what this is. This is this is when a blue state like California, New York, Illinois, New Jersey have high state taxes. They want taxpayers from low state uh, states that have smaller budgets to pay their taxes, a portion of their taxes, um, for the, a portion of their budgets. So a state like Florida, which our budget is about half of what New York's budget is per person, they want our taxpayers 
to subsidize their taxes. That's not right. It doesn't make any sense. So step one is Florida taxpayers, Texas taxpayers, all the, our states that have lower taxes, we shouldn't be subsidizing uh, the, the budgets of New York, California, New York, New Jersey, all these ridiculous states. They can't live within, within their means. That's number one. Number two is what they're doing, what, what they're also, how they're paying for this is they are they're cutting Medicaid in states across the country. Oh, all only red states. States like Texas and states like Florida, they're cutting our Medicaid program, which makes no sense. So you're going to cut the program for the poor and give tax breaks, breaks to the rich. That doesn't make any sense. Now, we have elections next year. How can anybody in a red state that's seeing that's, that in this bill, they're being asked to subsidize the rich in these blue states and have their Medicaid cut? How can they ever vote for this bill? The fourth thing holding this bill up is waiting for the Senate parliamentarian ruling on many of the key measures. For example, will measures dealing with immigration be allowed into the Build Back Better plan? These are all answers they'll need to wait on from the Senate parliamentarian. In some other news, with the pause of student loan payments coming to an end at the end of January, Chuck Schumer is calling on President Biden to extend that date into the future. For over 2.4 million New Yorkers, tens of millions of Americans, student loan payments are a huge burden upon them. And unfortunately, the pause, which says you don't have to pay them during the pandemic, goes away by the end of January. We are calling on the administration to continue that pause with the advent of Omicron, the continuation of COVID. Students should not be have this burden placed on their shoulders. And that's why we are so, so intent on getting the president to pause student debt um, uh, because uh, COVID is still here. In some other news, this week, the Senate is set to vote on a resolution which would nullify President Biden's vaccine mandate for private companies with more than 100 employees. In order for it to pass, they only need a simple majority. And with Joe Manchin now saying he will vote in favor of the resolution, they'll have just enough votes to get it done. The only problem is it won't be taken up in the House, and even if it did and passed, President Biden could veto the measure. Regardless, here is the White House responding to Manchin's opposition to the vaccine mandates. Switch gears totally to a comment from a statement from Senator Manchin last night. He voted with a he voted against a Republican amendment to zero out funding for the vaccine mandate, but then he put out a statement saying that he would actually support that idea in the coming weeks. What's your reaction to Manchin saying that he's against the president's mandate that much? Well, one, it's vax or test. Um, and obviously that is something we feel we have every authority to do based on a 50-year-old law uh, that Congress put into place 50 years ago. Uh, we simply disagree. Uh, we, we disagree uh, based on what we feel is a preponderance of evidence of the effectiveness of requirements, vaccinating or testing. Uh, you look at the private sector, there are a range of companies, airlines, hospital associations who have implemented these types of requirements effectively. We are the largest employer, the United States government, in this country. We have implemented requirements, and we have seen 96.5% compliance, something we're going to continue to build on. And these companies and the federal government are doing it for a range of reasons. It creates certainty, it allows people to feel safe in the workplace, and it's good for the economy. So we disagree on that front, and we're going to continue to press forward with these requirements. But to that point, if the companies are doing that, I mean, that's Manchin's statement, was that we should just continue to incentivize companies why, you know, what are you going to do if he votes with Republicans and tries to really gut funding for these mandates? I'm sure we'll be having discussions with him and anyone who is an opponent of these steps, but uh, I don't have all the details of what this would actually propose. We're talking about implementing uh, requirements through a 50-year-old law. It's obviously in the courts now. It is a good sign, no question, that companies are doing this in the private sector, but we still feel at this point in fighting the virus, it's important to move forward with these requirements. Go ahead. Whether these mandates get struck down or not, they're already receiving numerous lawsuits from private businesses, so we'll more than likely get struck down by the Supreme Court. But on that note, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, if you would like to receive a couple free stocks from Weeble, make sure to quickly claim them by clicking my link, which you will find in the description box below. To receive the first free stock, you will need to fully open an account, 
Then to receive the second free stock, which will be valued up to $2,000, you'll need to make a qualifying deposit of at least $5. And even if you aren't all that interested in investing or continuing to invest at this point in time, you can always sell the free stocks that you receive and transfer that money, however much they're worth, right back to your bank account. So free stocks or free money is completely up to you. So once again, I hope everyone has a great and safe rest of their day. If you did enjoy the content in today's video, it would greatly help me out if you would give this video a quick like, a big thumbs up. That does help out with the YouTube algorithm. And until next time, as always, I'll see you in the next video.